What's up everybody? This is Motormark coming to you from beautiful Southern California. I'm using my regular microphone today instead of my fancy new condenser mic because the condenser mic requires batteries and I believe I accidentally left it turned on last night so the battery will probably be dead. So unfortunately my Alaska series has not been doing too hot it doesn't seem to be getting a lot of attention. People are pretty much ignoring it, so I'm going to finish it for myself, but I'm going to accelerate the series by condensing it into a smaller number of episodes. I'm going to pull over and let these faster cars pass. So the original plan was to do a separate episode of the series for each port of call that we stopped at, and there were a total of four. Ketchikan, Juno, Skagway, and Victoria, British Columbia. And then there was going to be a separate video for Seattle because we actually found something really cool in Seattle. We were surprised with a little bit of a treat at the EMP Museum, and I'll, I will include that in the relevant episode. But to make a long story short, what I've decided to do in order to accelerate the series a little bit is to condense all of the Alaska material into one video. So I'll cover Ketchikan, Juno, and Skagway all in one video, and then I'll cover Victoria and Seattle in another video, so there will only be two more Alaska videos coming. So I will get to say that I finished the series that I wanted to make, and you guys won't have to put up with too many more Alaska videos that you don't care about. So anyways, uh, I'm gonna get right down to it. I want to start by thanking my girlfriend for putting this trip together in the first place, because right around the time we were trying to plan it, I was in the thick of a really bad semester at school, and I didn't have a lot of time to do research and try to help her plan this trip, so she pretty much planned it all by herself. She found all of the activities there were to do in Alaska and just sort of presented them to me as a menu with pros and cons and prices and just kind of we were able to decide what we wanted to do based on that, so thank you so much, girlfriend. Now on to the ports of call themselves. The first stop was Ketchikan. Ketchikan is a lovely little town in the Alaskan Panhandle, southeast Alaska. Uh, we decided to do it a little differently from the way most people do it. Most people will get together with uh, tour groups. They will join like a, a sightseeing tour. Uh, they'll do an air tour on an airplane. They'll go on a bus tour of the area, stuff like that. We decided to rent a motorcycle. There's a few advantages to this. Obviously, renting a motorcycle gives you the freedom to do what you want, when you want. If you go with a tour group, you're bound to their itinerary and their schedule. So you lose a lot of freedom, but we were able to go see exactly the things we wanted on our own pace, so it was really nice. And of course, as a motorcyclist, it was awesome for me to have the opportunity to ride a new bike I'd never ridden before, and also to ride in Alaska, which was quite nice. It's absolutely gorgeous, as you could probably imagine. I will shout these guys out because they were awesome. The bike was good, too. Uh, Panhandle Motorcycle Adventures, Mary and Rick, they treated us very well. They were very nice. They helped us decide what things we wanted to see in Ketchikan. So shout out, props to them. Uh, the bike we rode was a Suzuki Boulevard Cruiser Big One. Biggest bike I've ever ridden. I believe it's a 1500cc. It's like 14 and change. So that was a cool experience. And some of the things we decided to go see in Ketchikan while we were there were uh, the wilderness, which was beautiful. I never realized it before, but uh, it turns out that the Alaskan forest is actually part of one of the world's largest rainforest systems. You never really think of it as a rainforest because Alaska is so far north and it, like they get snow there and stuff, but it, it is a rainforest and if you go and hike into it and you get to see it, it's fairly obvious why it would be classified that way. It's very, there's moss everywhere, there's thick undergrowth, it's almost jungle-like. But it was beautiful, we loved walking around there, we saw all kinds of interesting plant life. We saw a river where the salmon spawn, although they weren't spawning that day. We hiked all the way down to the shoreline and ran into some locals there who told us that the tides in Alaska have a swing of almost 20 feet, which is quite insane. Uh, the tides in LA only really go like two or three feet. So it was pretty amazing to stand at the waterline at low tide and look up to where the tide would be at high tide, 20 feet above you. It's, it's pretty crazy. So anyway, we got done with the wilderness exploration and headed for Totem Bight State Park. And Totem Bight State Park is basically a museum about 
Native American cultures, specifically the ones that uh, embraced totem culture, culture surrounding totem iconography. And they didn't have any original old totem poles there because totem poles don't survive well because they live outdoors and they're made of wood. But they do still make new ones in the traditional way with the traditional materials. So basically you're looking at the real thing. And they had clan houses there, which was interesting. Uh, I won't, we learned a lot about them, but I don't want to bore you too much in this video. So I'll just uh, say that we saw interesting totem stuff and it was good. And what was surprising and fun about this particular museum was that uh, at the bottom of the hill where the museum is on, they actually have an antique car collection on display, which was pretty cool. It was fun to see that. I don't know too much about antique cars, but I like looking at them, so here's a little clip of those. What else did we see? They also had an antique gun collection on display, which was pretty interesting. Lots of different unique guns, different kinds of guns that were made with different technology and stuff. So it was fascinating to see those as well. It was interesting that this antique car and gun exhibit was on the same site as uh, the, the, totem, uh, the totem pole museum. But anyway, we wrapped up there and got back on our way. Uh, we headed up to Ward Lake, which is a little bit north of downtown Ketchikan, I guess. And we sort of just did that to enjoy the cruise up there and to see a little bit more of the wilderness. So that was nice. It was beautiful, the ride was beautiful, the lake was beautiful, and then pretty much we went back to town, dropped off the bike, and had lunch at a spot called Burger Queen, which was delicious. We got delicious milkshakes there. We actually didn't have burgers, we had something else. We, I think we got like fish and chips and a fish sandwich or something. And then we went next door to this little dive bar where they had legit good craft beer on tap for three dollars a pint. I don't know how they're getting away with that, but I was very happy to stumble upon it. And that was about it for Ketchikan. From there we moved on to Juneau, Alaska. And we had another unique kind of experience in Juneau. Again, we decided not to do what most of the people do on their, with their tour groups and stuff. We found a, a company that does bicycle tours, guided bicycle tours. So they drove us out by van to this lovely church overlooking Mendenhall Lake and the glacier there. And they trailered some bikes out for us, put us on bicycles, and we rode about 10 miles through the wilderness on and off road and ended up at the Mendenhall Glacier Visitor Center, which was beautiful, of course. And also very uh, thought-provoking, I guess, because you get to actually see how fast the glacier is melting. They actually built the visitor center at the foot of the glacier a few decades ago, and now the glacier is already like a mile away from it. It's pretty dramatic how, f how fast that thing is disappearing. On a happier note, uh, when we were done viewing the glacier, we hopped back in the vans and went back toward uh, Juneau proper. And they took us to Alaskan Brewing, where our tour concluded with an included beer tasting. So we got to try all the beer at Alaskan Brewing Company. And they also had a delicious, uh, unique beer on tap there that they had made, which was a habanero stout, which was... Uh, it was, uh, how do I describe it? It was uh, quite lovely. Not as spicy as I would like, because I like, I like it pretty hot, but still quite good. So that was about it for Juno, actually. It was back on the ship again, and then we left for Skagway. And on the way to Skagway, we stopped and saw another glacier where I got to witness calving, which is when huge chunks of ice fall off of a glacier directly into the ocean. We weren't able to get very close to the glacier, unfortunately, because there were a lot of icebergs in the fjord there, and it was too dangerous for the ship to get very close. So we had to look from afar, but it was still pretty cool to see. So then the next day we arrived in Skagway, and this is its a fascinating phenomenon, by the way, if you've never been on a cruise, to travel around. Basically, you, you wake up, and you're in this port, and you go around the, the, the town, and you do stuff, and then you go back to the ship, go to sleep, and then you wake up the next morning, and you're at a whole new place. It's like you're in a teleporting hotel or something. So anyway, like I was saying, we ended up in Skagway next, and in Skagway we found a tour group that uh, does wilderness tours. So what they do is they throw you on a boat, a little boat, a power boat, and they motor you about an hour and a half outside of Skagway, 
And Skagway is already a really small, out of the way, sort of boondocky kind of a little town. And they motor you an hour and a half outside of that to a little community of cabins where basically just tour guides live. And you hike with the tour guides from their little cabins down to a little river. And from the river, you paddle your canoe up until the water gets deep enough to drop a motor, and then you motor up the river the rest of the way until it meets Davidson Glacier. And that's what you realize, really, for the first time, just how fast these glaciers are melting, and you get to actually see it in person. It's actually a legit, like, waterfall coming down off the front of the glacier. And it turns out that that river that we were paddling and motoring our way up to reach the glacier is actually 100% made from runoff that's melting off of the glacier. It's pretty crazy how fast those things are melting. It's staggering. So we got done with the glacier, headed back to the canoe, started motoring back, and we came across a tiny little iceberg. And we picked it up, brought it in the boat, everybody got to hold it. I couldn't resist eating a piece of it, because how often do you get a chance to eat 10,000 year old ice, or even just hold it in your hand? So that made the experience just all that much better. That was pretty fun, pretty cool. So we went back to town where we found another brewery actually. And I was excited about this brewery because the tour guide had told us that they have a special spruce tip beer. Spruce, chi spruce tips are the little pieces of spruce trees that grow on the outermost part of the branches that eventually become the branches themselves later on. But when they're young, when they first grow, you can actually eat them and they taste like hops. So they made a beer out of them. But when we got there, they were sold out. And it actually turns out there's another tour company in Skagway that actually hosts motorcycle tours. You can rent a bike from them and just tour around, which would be pretty good on its own, I think. But they also host tours, and I'm talking big tours, like month-long motorcycle touring tours, where they partner you up with like a, a support vehicle that will follow you along to take care of you and take care of the bike and stuff and everything. So it's a, it's a pretty cool thing they got going there. I think I'd like to try it one day if I ever get the opportunity. But anyway, that's going to wrap up Skagway, and with that, it's going to wrap up the Alaska portion of this series. Uh, in the next video, I will go ahead and talk about Victoria, which was quite a relaxing way to round out the cruise, and then Seattle, which we expected just to be a day of uh, waiting for a f our flight to take us back home, but we ended up stumbling across something pretty cool at the EMP Museum, so look forward to that. I think that video will actually be interesting to you, even if you haven't been enjoying the cruise and Alaska portions of this series, so keep an eye out, and uh, thanks for watching if you've made it this far, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.